All righty. Um, Diffy, go ahead. Sounds good. Thanks, Vic. So, yes, as uh, Vic said, my name is Diffy Rutra. I'm based in Sydney. I am going to be demoing the Azure Chat Solution Accelerator, which is also a replay of uh, AI tours uh, that, that we did last uh, time. Uh, is it okay if I share my screen, Vic? From Absolutely. Here? Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So I'll take over. Um, so what I might do is I, I'm going to do a bit of um, slide, uh, set the I guess scene a bit, and then we'll go into the demo. Um, so kind of presenting the content again. Um, I guess you've seen, you guys have seen many Copilot from Microsoft in terms of, you know, PowerPoint to Outlook um, or even GitHub Copilot. Um, it's kind of fair to say, you know, we're living in the age of uh, Copilot. Um, and I guess, you know, in terms of what we are seeing is there's sort of three different patterns that, that we're starting to see when it comes to uh, building your uh, building Copilots. Um, the one that's, I guess, the most common and kind of everyone is aware of is GitHub Copilot, you know, where it kind of sits next to you um, as you're programming and it's kind of augmenting uh, in terms of uh, your kind of your development activities. Uh, then the middle one is Copilot as a foundation. So this is your Bing Copilot or even ChatGPT and uh, or even Azure Chat, for example, right? Um, and then the third space is Copilot as sort of uh, this task oriented, which I guess uh, Daniel might be talking about that uh, very soon as well, which is kind of very, very interesting area that's uh, uh, developing rapidly. Um, agent based sort of activities, um, even you know some of the new um, Azure OpenAI capabilities that we released last week around uh, assistance API and, and how that may, you know, you might give it a task and, and let it figure out uh, a plan and then execute that task based on uh, the task that you've given. Um, and this slide you've probably also seen many, many times as well in terms of uh, building uh, your own copilot stack. Um, and I guess an, an iteration of um, the previous version is the middle section here in terms of uh, the AI orchestration layer, where we now have the capability uh, of code interpreter. So in terms of you know uploading a CSV file and let it analyze and give you graphs on that. So essentially it's writing the program, validating itself and giving you the result uh, based on uh, the, the task that you've set. But I guess in terms of, you know, there's a lot of building blocks within Azure. So how do we actually put together to kind of build your own copilot? And that's where we build Azure Chat. Um, so it's essentially. Right. Um, so I just ask a question on that previous slide. Um, I've seen it a few times. Just could you just point out where Semantic Kernel fits into that stack? Yeah, uh, Vic, did you want to take a question on that? Yeah, yeah. So yes, Semantic Kernel uh, within within the stack. Um, yeah, we don't we don't actually advertise Semantic Kernel as a uh, something that is taken out of the box. That's completely, um, I guess. Um, uh, deploy it as part of core Copilot stack, uh, but there is a uh, a version or some some uh, adaptation of Semantic Kernel within the orchestration of that um, uh, in there. So at the beginning, and that's continually evolving, um, and and that's that's changing. Uh, so the again Semantic Kernel and Langchain and other sort of thing, it's it's uh, orchestrator um, in 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 this instance. So yeah, so we don't you know again take whatever the semantic kernel version there and just deploy it there. So there's some adaptation and the teams are co cross collaborating um, uh, to help out with uh, building and, and, and embedding that orchestration stack. Thanks. Hopefully that kind of yeah. answer that question. Yeah. Dig into that a bit more. I'm just trying to, to come up with a, a bit of an app stack myself and it's a bit of lack of clarity as to sort of how those two will go together or move apart long term. Oh yeah. Okay. So like um, the 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 product sort of roadmap and so on. Um, yeah, and just just how sort of the orchestration piece fits together. Like I really like semantic kernel. What, what's capable with it? But if it's being folded into the copilot stack in a different way, and the work that I'm doing at the moment with semantic kernel gets thrown away, I kind of want to know that upfront that I'm doing this work just right away and do something else. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to work that out. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that that's something that can be that we can sort of follow up uh, with the PM. Uh, we do uh, we, in the last session uh, of of uh, Semantic Kernel office hours and so on. There, there's and also even the the last um, 
publication in the blog post, uh, there is a there is a clear roadmap and there is a sort of pretty much open roadmap uh, for anyone to, to see. Uh, it is an open source uh, project uh, in any case. Um, and, you know, from version one, that's basically a dedication that, you know, the the, the project will, will still be around and will be supported um, from, from then on. Um, you know, there's a number of changes for sure, but before V1, there's a lot of breaking changes and then V1, uh, that's basically a uh, commitment from the team that, you know, the, the investments that they make uh, will uh, remain um, uh, you know, from foreseeable feature and, and the fact that it's kind of reached that V1. Um, which sort of stack are you are you using? Are you using Python or .NET or what, what sort of uh, stack that you think of? And that's part of the, the challenge right now is that Python needs to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Python isn't isn't there yet, uh, but in the last uh, video uh, that I'll see if I can paste it in here, um, uh, Matthew actually mentioned about uh, you know the target is around you know March April uh, and then definitely before build uh, to have parity with with .NET. Great, thanks. Um, cool. And the other piece I was trying to work out really is where where AutoGen fits into the stack. If if you actually can invoke AutoGen from Copilots at the moment. Oh, good question. Yeah, and that is in the roadmap as well. Um, the the spring roadmap uh, that. Uh, that's that's in there. So basically, they they going to uh, look to integrate that uh, within within semantic kernel. I, I, yeah, just think, be... I, I just linked it, big. Excellent. Thanks, man. Cool. Thanks. Hey, cool. We'll, we'll check that out. Thank you, Greg, for the question. All right. So I'll continue on. I did no question. Um, so yes. So essentially. Um, how do we put these building blocks together within Azure uh, to kind of build, I guess, you know, a co-pilot experience? Uh, it is an entirely an open source project that's built with uh, Node.js, Next.js, uh, along with a um, number of um, Azure OpenAI Azure AI services. Um, and in terms of interacting with Azure OpenAI, we're using the OpenAI uh, Node.js SDK directly, um, as we said at the start of it. So late last week, we actually introduced a number of new features um, in terms of uh, Azure Chat, uh, essentially introducing, um, you know, in terms of multimodal, function calling, uh, persona, and also DALI 3 in terms of generating images as well. So instead of talking to the slide, what I might do is I might go straight into a demo. Um, so if you see here, uh, I've already logged in, um, so you can bring in your own authentication. So it uses next oath. Um, so I've logged in with my Microsoft credentials. If you already have Google or any sort of um, authentication provider, you can plug that in as well. Um, as you can see, you know, there is a new chat button, uh, which I can use it here. And one of my colleagues um, who code developed with, with me likes to start simple and ask the question, um, tell me a dad joke. Um, behind the scene, we've deployed GPT-4 um, and I'll I'll let you guys be the, uh, the judge of the joke, but I guess, you know, very simple as you can see, you know, uh, sort of a turn-based uh, chat interface that you can see here. Um, similar to the version one that, that we had previously, um, one of the key feature that we introduced here is personas. Um, Personas are nothing but your system messages. So in here, you can come in and create a new persona. Um, and what we'll do is when you start a new chat conversation, this persona, essentially your system message, gets injected into that particular chat session. So in this case, on the screen, what you see here is there's two different personas that I've created. Uh, the first one is talk like a pirate. It's exactly what you would imagine, right? So whenever you ask a question, it responds like a pirate. Um, it, it uses a pirate, pirate lingos and so on. Um, but you can also kind of adopt a bit more serious um, persona here. So for example, you know, if, imagine you have a development team um, who are you know building React JS application. Um, whenever you ask a question, you kind of wanted to respond it in a very sort of you know similar way in terms of hey, your team might be using uh, Tailwind CSS they might be using function components as opposed to class components. So what we've given, uh, what you see here is these are examples, few short examples in terms of, hey, whenever you ask a question, 
here's how you should be responding in terms of uh, the ReactJS components, right? So in this case, you know, I've given a simple example of creating a uh, input component with Tailwind CSS style. So now if you use this to ask a question, uh, for example, to create a button, it'll actually use this style to respond, um, which is really, really useful. Um, so what I've done here is, right, for example, if I go back here, back home, uh, you will see these personas come here. So maybe one of the option is also what we've done here is um, as an admin of an organization, you can come in and create a persona and then publish this to the rest of the organization. So you as an individual can create a persona and it will exist within your own sort of um, uh, lo uh, logged in session. But as an admin, you can also publish so that the rest of the organization can see as well. Um, so if I go back here and start a new chat, uh in terms of the talk like the pirate um and then another example or another feature that we've introduced is also the prompt library so meaning now you can actually um create these prompts and then reuse this across all the different chat sessions as well so i've already created this dad joke um all it does is just pre-populates it you can modify it the way that you want uh hit send and hopefully it should come back and now talk like a pirate but tell the joke in a pirate way, right? So as you can see, it's, it's a bit more intuitive, but um, uh, I guess, you know, the, the tone changes and and the, the tone is same for, for the rest of the uh, chat session. Um, then I guess, you know, the most commonly asked feature is essentially, hey, can I chat with files? Um, so as you can see here, there's a little um, upload button here. I've already gone ahead and uploaded uh, a file and if I can remove, give me one second, uh, uploaded a file that has um, the population details about Sydney. Um, so I essentially just went to the website and then um, export that as a, a PDF. So I've already gone and uploaded it. And as soon as you upload, you can see all the files um, that, that we are going to be um, chatting with. Uh, you can continue to upload uh, multiple different files and it'll only exist within this particular chat thread. So you can't extract it or um, let others have the same conversation. Um, it essentially just sits within this uh, session of the file. Uh, now I can go and ask the question, for example, um, what is the number of uh, couples uh, who are both employed and works full time? Uh, so this particular stats exists within uh, the, the file I just uploaded. And as you can see, it's come back with the result. And one of the feature we also added is uh, citation. So that's one of the things that um, that customers asked, for example. So as you can see here, uh, it's come back with the with the stats, and you can also validate that you know what is the um, context that it used to answer the question. Um, another feature, I guess, uh, that we are super excited, I guess, and it's native to OpenAI is uh, function calling. Um, so this actually opens up a lot of opportunities for Azure Chat in terms of um, you know you don't have to directly bake in any sort of APIs within Azure Chat as a solution, but instead you can build it externally and let Azure Chat execute it uh, based on what the user question uh, users are asking uh, in terms of the question. So an example here is Bing Search. So you can bring in uh, your own Bing Search API um, and essentially define the function calling definition in here. So this is the exact same schema that uh, Azure OpenAI expects for function calling. Um, and then um, save save this your, with your API key, which essentially we store it within uh, your own um, Azure Key Vault um, securely. So you only ever get to see it once when you um, when you first initially creating it. So once you create it, um, what you can do is you can just click Start Chat, and then chat with it. Or what you can do is create a new chat, but then bring in multiple different extensions into a uh, particular chat. So in this case, if I hit Bing search, um, I can go back and say, uh, what is the latest in cricket? So because I said, what is the latest in cricket, it's now going to execute the Bing search um, extension, get the results back, and it's going to come back and respond uh, with the cricket results, right? So that, there, um, what you see on the UI here is the sort of the function calling step. So because I said, what is the latest um, in Cricket, it's actually calling this function, which is defined behind the scene, dynamically injected because I turned it on. The function is called Bing search. 
and this is the parameter that it's passing uh, to Bing Search API, and this is the result that function call came back, which is essentially the Bing Search result. It's using that as a context to respond back to the user, and you can mix and match this as well in terms of you know adding a persona like talk like a pirate, and then add the extension as well uh, to get a bit more I guess dynamic response. Um, one thing I want to show here is, and and this is where kind of going back to a bit more advanced ex, um, example is, um, imagine you know there is a restaurant. So in this case, you know one of the examples that we showed is it's like a pirate restaurant, I guess. Um, they have you know a bunch of customers in the database, and that's the database schema. Um, there is a bunch of you know menu items that they have, and then sort of the purchasing behaviors between the um, the customers and and the menu items. Um, so this detailed description here gets injected as a system uh, message for each chat thread as well as you turn it on. So it kind of gives uh, the um, GPT-4 a bit more context around uh, what it should be um, you know, looking at in terms of creating these, uh, converting these uh, user questions into SQL uh, and so on. Um, behind the scene, what, uh, what we have here is a logic app which basically um, accepts a raw SQL and executes it against my database and returns the result. Um, in production, obviously, you know, do not trust <laughs> in terms of the SQLs uh, that uh, large language models are generating. So definitely, this, this is just for demo purpose. Um, you know, you would have much more control in terms of executing the SQL. But what I'll show you here is if I go back in here and start this chat, and now what I can do is ask the question. Um, what is the most expensive item? So what this is going to do is um, it's going to turn my my question into a SQL statement, which uh, is called this function here, execute SQL. Um, it's taking its own time because I didn't. Um, this is a serverless <laughs> um, uh, logic app that I have it running. So by the time it wakes up, so it's basically executing it, wait, waiting for the response. Um, once it comes back with the result, it'll show you the results back. Um, so you can also ask, you know, a bit more complex questions. For example, um, what is the most expensive item and who bought it? Um, so essentially, it'll write the SQL statement. Um, it's a joint statement between all four different tables, and it'll execute and come back with the result. So wait for this to come back, I guess. Um, so while in the meantime, you yeah. might want to. Yeah, I don't know while, while we're waiting for it. Want to yeah. show extensions perhaps, uh, Tippi? Uh, say that again. Extensions? Yeah, yeah. Perhaps while we were um, waiting for this. Yeah, 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 for sure. So if I just go back to the extensions part of it. Um, yeah, so I guess in this case, um, if we go, um, so you can also bring in your own AI search. So uh, a lot of the customers want to, um, execute or index their content externally. So one of the most common requests is Confluence um, because they have their documentations and user stories and things like that on Confluence. But um, how do I bring that into Azure Chat? So you can do that indexing separately and then bring that uh, into Azure Chat. So essentially point it directly to your AI search um, with what your, what your vectors are, what is, what is your index name and so on. Um, so you can even bring in multiple different um, AI search into this as well. Um, so with multiple different indexes, create a new chat thread and then turn them on uh, based on that. Um, so let me quickly check if it's come back. Probably not. I'll just execute it here just so that we get worked up again. Might ask the same question again. Demo gods are never never happy. Uh, let me turn that on. I'll go back. That's the same question. It's the same thing with um, uh, the other sort of chat experience that that I'm going to to show later. Uh, it, yeah. it worked, you know, before the demo, but during the demo, you never know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that right. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see. It's taking its own time. So, yeah, it, trust me, it worked. <laughs> so maybe, maybe as a follow up, I can send a uh, video of this. Um, yeah. So I guess the other thing is uh, image generation. So if I go back, um, create a new chat. Um, 
we've also baked in DALI 3 in here. So um, DALI 3 is really good at um, understanding, you know, every single nuance in terms of um, the, the prompt that you put in. Um, so you probably have seen on Azure Chat Repo, there's a lot of pirate images in a, in a sort of 3D um, kind of style, and this is the prompt that we used to generate. Um, again, it's using uh, function calling behind the scene. So because we said um, create an image, it identifies, hey, there is a function to create an image, uh, which in turn calls DALI 3 to generate that image and come back. So in this case, it's identified there, you know, it should call create image. Uh, that's the prompt uh, that we passed in. And now it's come back with this image. And here is, uh, wait for it to come back and render. And that's the image that has come back to render. Um, the other one I kind of quickly want to show here is um, multimodal. So we've also deployed GPT for vision um, behind the scenes. So you can actually upload an image. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll upload the IKEA one of the IKEA user manuals. So I'll ask it to create. Can you create a step by step guide of this? So in this case, as you can see, you know, there's no sort of words that's explaining, but all it is is literally just images and it has a bunch of steps. And what's impressive, right? If you look into this image, the step one is here, step two is here. Step three is here, step four is here, step five is here. It's kind of all over the place. It's not quite, you know, in a particular order. But impressively, it still gets it right in terms of what these steps are. Um, so, you know, multimodal is very, very powerful in terms of analyzing images, um, reverse engineering graphs, and so on. Um, and there are many, many, many different use cases uh, for multimodality. Um, yeah, so, the, so that's some of the, um, I guess, new features that, that we've added. Um, essentially, these are all um, you know services that's uh, available within um, Azure OpenAI, um, and there's even more that we announced last week, right? In terms of code interpreter assistance and so on, um, that will hopefully continue to build uh, into this. So that's my demo. Um, any question? Fantastic demo, Biffy. Um... I was just going to say um, around the potential integration with semantic kernel um, and understand that uh, you know assistance API just recently released and so on um, and and just to to kind of make it sort of clear that um, what semantic kernel sort of positioning is that it's 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 going to be a, sort of a a neutral um, and and agnostic as possible. So if there's uh, kind of new features that are being released uh, by Azure OpenAI or OpenAI uh, or other LMs um, is that we going to to make that magically available? That's that's basically what Matthew sort of uh, trying to sort of uh, portray. It's not trying to compete in any way. Um, it's more around making making as medical as, as your uh, Swiss Army knife, if you will, for all the various integrations that you have. So in this case, it's Azure Open AI, uh, but if you have other LMs, um, certainly that can be um, integrated as well in this case. Mm -hmm. So. That's fantastic. Um, you did mention a little bit about uh, again. It's it's already one thirty, so I don't want to sort of <laughs> push right. you on yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, we it. talked yeah. about yeah, we talked about the extension stuff, and I think that would be an opportunity for us to to see how we can integrate with um, with Azure Chat, right? Yeah, that's right. So in terms of uh, extensions, I guess um, these are just API calls. So if you have an API call um, that's even private. To your own in environment because the API calls get are uh, executed on the server side. Um, so if you have an API with with the definition schema definition, then you can essentially put that in uh, into a into Azure Chat or even into uh, you know container apps or even logic apps or app servers, and then let Azure Chat execute that. So it's almost like a you know agent calling another agent to kind of complete a task uh, in the sense. So you can even create your own semantic kernel. The new agent features I saw that's coming soon. Create your agents externally, and then let Azure Chat call um, uh, the semantic kernel extension uh, agents to to I guess complete the ta task. Really awesome. Okay, aware of uh, you uh, running running to another meeting. So yeah, I don't know if Simon's <laughs> got a question though. If you have a question, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll try and do it quickly, which is hard yeah. for me. But um, you know, it's um, I, uh, first of all, I, lo I love all, I love how you're using like um, AZ, like AZD and stuff to like deploy. That's like the same like you like you guys are in like in 
like the AI in a box, just that's that's awesome stuff. It was like it was so much harder, kind of, you know, with, with <laughs> other projects where you have to kind of go kind of spin it up yourself. That's really cool. But I wanted to know also, even like like AI in a box, there's a whole lot of stuff with like bot framework and stuff. Do you have any comments on like um, what what do you think about like using the bot framework? And is there any kind of plans to maybe um, kind of link in like direct line? Uh, so I, th I think we, yeah, we, we've, we constantly talk about, I guess, these mm. integrations. Um, I, I think where we probably make sense is for us to introduce them as extensions. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where even overall, right, that we are starting to see even semantic kernel publish these micro micro agents versus sort of there's another agent that's sitting at the top to figure out, you know, which routing and so on. Mm. Um, that's probably the path that, that we would look at. Um, rather than trying to bloat this one, yep. what what it started as a simple solution accelerator, and now it's a bit more complex, I guess. Mm. But um, keep it simple, but bring in the external, um, I guess, extensions that require an API. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. No, awesome, awesome work. I'm loving it. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Tim. Enjoy. Thank you, Tiffany. Bye. Bye. Appreciate it. All right. Um, Thank you again. Uh, so uh, for anyone else, if, if you have any questions, uh, I just paste in the um, GitHub uh, Azure Chat Solution Accelerator URL uh, in the chat. Um, so if you want to get in touch as well, uh, there is an email address um, that you can and send an email to. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we can have follow up uh, sessions if need be.